pretty important match, top eight implications for this tournament on the line. Yeah, and for Dan Jessup, who is a mainstay on the SEG Tour, you know, even if he doesn't uh, get there this tournament, this every single point matters. He's been going to most events this year, if not all of them, and I suspect the same will be true for Hillman and his brother throughout the rest of the year, trying to vie for those at-large bids at the end of Season 2. Jessup on the play here leads on Basic Island Serum Visions. You'll notice that many of his cards have sunglasses drawn on them. I didn't notice that because it's very small. It's true. Some of them are bigger. You'll, okay. you'll, you'll see more of it. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. I just am curious why. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, both players here having decent starts. Uh, the Is a Phoenix deck doesn't really want to cast Faithless Looting on turn one unless you're discarding a, at least one copy of Arclight Phoenix. Uh, normally, you want to start with Serum Vision or something to kind of sculpt your next few draws. But Oliver here, turn one Faithless Looting is one of the better plays that he can have early on. It discards a Dredger and Golgari Thug and a Blood Gas, so two live ones there. Jessup will shock to 18 for his Steam Vents and has Pyromancer Ascension. And here is the Dredge 4. Looks like a Conflagrate hitting the bin as well as a Life from the Loam. Oliver here had that Blood Gas already, really wanted to find a prize amalgam to apply a lot of pressure early for very little investment but can still get the Blood Gas back with a land. Really needs some other burst here, uh, like a Cathartic Reunion, to, to really punish Dan for having a Pyromancer Ascension start as opposed to a Thing in the Ice start. The hand for Tomiko looks like a little bit of a mess. Yeah, I saw at least one Narc Amoeba hanging out. Creeping, Creeping Chill, chill Prized Amalgam, but he has to just, just discard all these. He's just going to flashback Conflagrate for five. I mean, that seems fine. You're going to knock Danny all the way down to 13. Uh, unfortunately, the Prize Amalgam doesn't uh, see the Blood Gas entering the battlefield, but he does get his Dredgers back into the graveyard, as well as that uh, Life from the Loam. And if he finds uh, something good off a of Dredge next turn, maybe a Narc Amoeba can bring back that Prize Amalgam. So that put Jessup to 13. This fetch puts him to 12, finds another island. See how quickly he can get the Ascension going. It's one of my main gripes with Pyromancer Ascension is sometimes it's super easy to get going and it's completely busted, and other times it just doesn't do anything. Side of hand with Sunglasses, looks at Manamorphos with Sunglasses and Lightning Bolt. He already has a Manamorphos in hand. Yeah, he also has two Slide of Hands in hand, too. Uh, this turn, what he can do is go Manamorph, Manamorphos, Trigger, Slide of Hand, Trigger, that'll put the second counter on there, and then uh, Slide of Hand again will uh, let him, you know, double sleight of hand, but he's preparing more for next turn, and uh, he's going to cast another sleight of hand here, put a second counter on Pyromancer Ascension, and the next turn each mana morphos generates two extra mana while also drawing uh, two cards. It's crazy. Yeah, shape in his hand, there's that third sleight of hand. Ascension will be online next turn. Copying Mana Morphos, definitely really powerful. You go plus two mana, draw two cards. Yeah, if you ever have the ability to play towards uh, that specifically, always do that. Tomiko will dredge the thug again, and it's just four dredgers hitting the bin. He's already, he already had that stuff. Yeah, dredger flooded. Gemstone mines the land for turn. Had the land, importantly, for this flashback of Faithless Looting, and looks like he has two Stinkweed Imps, so he's going to be able to dredge 10 off of it. Let's see if he can hit an Archimeba and bring back that prize amalgam. First dredge, almost a total miss, just a Faithless Looting of relevance there. The second one, there's two Blood Gas. He already played his land for turn, though, and another dredger. Yeah, so he might have a pretty decent next turn. He can dredge Life from the Loam, uh, get back some lands, play one of them. Uh, get back two Blood Gas, which brings back a Prize Amalgam. But Dan Jessup might actually just have a combo kill turn this turn. And that's really the reason why they play High Master Ascension. You're going to see right here exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so Jessup to 10 after the, off of the attack, but now he's untapping with Active Ascension, multiple Mana Morphos in hand. All right, so you're going to see him lead off here with a Mana Morphos, going to generate mana. Then he's going to cast Thing in the Ice, and then he's going to cast another Mana Morphos, generate mana. Then he's going to play a couple copies of Lightning Bolt, maybe a couple draw spells, uh, and it, it just go ballistic. And he might, if he if he casts Faithless Looting and finds a couple copies of Arclight Phoenix, every Lightning Bolt does six, uh, Arclights do three. It's it's just bananas. So Mana Morphos for Blue Red both times. Draws two card, another Mana Morphos. Yeah, this is this is this is disgusting. One of the pickups was Faithless Looting as well. He'll be able to see a lot of cards this turn.
You mentioned there is that thing in the ice in hand, though there's a lot of stuff in his deck that can just win this turn. Right, but I think he's going to be flush with mana, especially now that he drew the third mana Morphos. So I wouldn't mind just go ahead and casting the thing dice to make sure you transform it, but I think he's going to transform it even if he uh, casts mana Morphos here, so it's not that big of a deal. So now he gets to resolve another copy here. So goes up to six total floating, draws a million cards. Draws worth Thought Scour and Opt. Uses one of his three floating blue mana to Opt twice. Tries to the bottom on the first one. Yeah, and he's just looking for Phoenixes here. That Noxious Revival might be enough. Yeah, Noxious Revival was picked up. Resolves his second opt. Looks like there's already a Lightning Bolt floating around in the hand. Scries to the bottom again. Arclight Phoenix drawn. I cannot imagine that the game is not over. It's just going to take some sequencing from Danny Jessup. We're going to watch him figure it out here. But I think, I mean, he's got enough sunglasses. Even a blind man can figure this one out. Thought Scour himself, two to the graveyard, draws a card. Second copy. Two more, no Phoenixes there. Yeah, now he can Noxious Survival on the Lightning Bolt, Manamorphose, draw it, cast Bolt from hand, Bolt from drawn. That's already 12 right there. A couple Phoenixes with Phase Looting, that's 15. Finding five more damage seems relatively trivial. Spends one of his three floating red for Faithful Saluting. Copy that. No, Mana Morphos was drawn. Yeah. Scards Arclight Phoenix. That one's already coming back. Second copy of Faithless Saluting. Right, can we recount how many spells he's cast this turn? <laughs> yeah, where's the storm counter? Uh, this, one, this is why you see uh, some players gravitate towards this build of the deck because the draws where you start with Pyromancer Ascension and basically untap with an active one on turn four, it is very difficult to lose. But the games where the deck struggles is when it plays Pyromancer Ascension on turn two and then just doesn't really get off the ground because you just draw a mishmash, a uh, bunch of different versions or variations of those cantrip effects. Uses his last floating blue to Serum Visions. Draw a scry to the top. Yeah, but fortunately for Helm, still has two copies of Manamorphos in hand. Right. Another scry two to the bottom. Picked up another Arclight Phoenix. Taps his island. It's going to cast and copy and opt. Seen well over half this deck at this point. Drew a lightning bolt. Copies up, scries to the bottom. There's a Serum Visions. Two red mana floating, but he still has that other mana Morphos. All right, Misty Rainforest is land for turn. He'll fetch down the nine. He's put all his cards on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not even like the cards you put on bottom are bad. It's just uh, he just needs the extra mana. Or I don't think he really needs the extra mana, but he's going to use it. Finds another island. This is, for me, this type of a draw from Is It Phoenix is rather scary from, uh, like, a design perspective because the deck plays on such a reasonable wavelength most of the time. It's when you have, like, the insanely busted uh, double Phoenix on turn two draws or, or you know, even sometimes even better than that. And then you have draws like this where he's literally just storm combo killing the opponent. Yeah, so there was Noxious Revival. Put two Mana Morphos on top, cast Serum Visions, draws both of those, does some more scrying. Still has that two right of floating and now just picked up two more Mana Morphos. Yeah, and that's it's just trivial at this point. All right, cast Mana Morphos. Resolves the copy. One blue, one red. And now he's going to make another red and a green mana so they can cast a Noxious Revival for mana. Yeah, and that makes it actually infinite so he doesn't have to deal himself damage. The, so the, the copy uh, targets Manamorphose, the original targets the other Nox Revival in the graveyard. That lets you go infinite, uh, draw your deck, make an infinite mana, and then you can at some point infinitely recur lightning bolts or something. It's, again, it's, it's ridiculous. As you saw, Nox Revival Manamorphose put on top. Now he's going to cast Manamorphose, draw both of those, go up two mana. Once again, making that green so we can cast Noxious Revival. 
There we go. Okay. I was like, Oliver, man, you know you know what's happening. It's infinite. He just demonstrated the loop. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go, game two. Now you get your ley lines of the void. You get to really show what your deck can do after sideboard. Yeah, things do change during sideboards. We'll start on Dan Jessup's side. He's up a game here. The sideboard, he has two Alpine Moon and two Blood Moon. Nah, those are really for the uh, the land-based matchups like Tron, uh, Valcut, uh, things that, you know, you can't normally handle with spells like Lightning Bolt or Flame Slash. It's too ravenous trap. Uh, that is definitely going to come in in this matchup. All the anti-graveyard cards are phenomenal against Dredge. Uh, sometimes they're not enough by themselves, but they're still pretty good. And even though Noxious Revival uh, is more of a combo card with Pyromancer Ascension, it does act as an anti-graveyard card of sorts. Uh, it's not quite as good as Surgical Attraction because you don't strip it from them completely, but it does uh, do a little bit in a pinch. One Echoing Truth. Uh, might be okay at clearing out some blockers, buying some time. Don't love it, but, you know, it, it might be worthwhile. It's two Narset Porter Avails. Uh, that one might be okay at just helping gum up the ground because the dredge deck really attacks you from uh, going wide on the battlefield with things like Blood Gas and Prize Amalgam. Uh, that said, it might be a little too slow, but it is one of those threats that doesn't rely on the graveyard, so it does help get around Leyline of the Void, so I do expect it to come in. So that, that was about Sahili, yeah? Oh, I'm yes. sure. Do you like the Narsets? I do like the Narsets. The, if you cast it when the, the dredge deck doesn't have a whole lot going on, the Narsets actually shut down Cathartic Reunion and Faithless Looting. So, a pretty big game against the dredge deck. Two Lightning Axe, two Abrade. Spire removal, not really great here. All the creatures from dredge are pretty sticky. They just keep coming back over and over again. It's kind of like their whole thing. Yep. Uh, removal not traditionally very good in that uh, scenario. All right, then let's check out Tomiko's dredge sideboard. He has an Alpine Moon. Nope. All right, three Lightning Axe. I do like the Lightning Axe. You need ways to kill Thing in the Ice. It's uh, one of the stronger cards in the matchup. Uh, two mana threat that often uh, threatens to, to you know take away your entire life total in uh, roughly two swings, and the thing and bounce all your creatures. And and if the deck doesn't really get off the ground. Uh, with those early creature starts, you know, the, the thing the ice can, can really close the game quickly. Right. Assassin's Trophy, probably much the same reason. Yes. A little flexibility, too. The, the spar removal is good against Thing in the Ice. Not really great against much else, but uh, overloading on Wasteful Thing in the Ice is important in the matchup. All right, three Ancient Grudge, yeah, not so much, but do you like any of the four Nature's Claims? I don't love the four Nature's Claims. Uh, there's not really a whole lot going on artifact or enchantment base wise from the opponent, but. The Showstopper, Leyline of the Void, that's going to shut down the Arclight Phoenix Draws uh, and, and is also going to shut down Pyromancer Ascension. We saw it play a huge role in Game 1 there for Dan Jessup, and I fully expect Oliver to be bringing the Leyline of the Void as he's done and as he's drawn multiple times over the past few rounds. And it is three copies of Leyline of the Void. We see quite a range of the number of copies of this card players register. Three is enough to be fairly consistent with it. I don't know if I've ever seen two. Yeah, two is the number that I can't remember ever seeing. One, three, and four quite often. Right, players looking at their opening sevens here. All right, so Tomiko will be on the play here. Copperline Gorge, Faithless Looting. Yeah, that's one of the better starts for the deck as long as he has the dredger for it. Looks like there's more than one dredger. Stinkweed Imp, Life from the Loam. Those will be discarded. I'm actually surprised Oliver chose to discard two dredgers instead of just one. Uh, not really afraid of something like uh, Ravenous Trap here. Jessup just Misty Rainforest go. So Tomiko will dredge that Stinkweed Imp. A couple Faithless Lootings, uh, a couple lands, and a Cathartic Reunion. Not inspired dredging. No, but this turn could still be great if he has something like Cathartic Reunion to follow it up. Even something as innocuous as Life from the Loam could just help him play uh, a longer, slow game. And uh, after sideboard, being able to play a longer game is fine because both players usually have some amount of graveyard interaction and or removal that stifles the other one's draw. Scalding Tarn is the land for turn. It'll fetch to 19 for a basic mountain. There's a Conflict Rate and a Life from the Loam in the hand. He's going to cast a Life from the Loam. He'll pick up those three lands. We'll target them anyway. Jessup's going to fetch in response. I don't think he's going to really pop off the graveyard specifically. Uh, might be uh, casting like an Ops Thought Scour or something like that to dig for a Ravenous Trap to clean up the graveyard. Uh, with two lootings gone, a Life from the Loam there. 
or I guess three looting's gone actually, and a cathartic reunion. The explosive nature of the dredge deck is is uh, not nearly as as potent. So if he finds Ravenous Trap here, it could be good for him. Jessup fetches Basic Island. He'll opt. Puts the card on the bottom. Draw. It was a Serum Visions. Yeah, nothing's going to play there. So Tomiko's Life from the Loam will resolve, and he'll pass back. Life from the Loam doing a nice Ancestral Recall impression there. <laughs> Jessup Scalding Tarn. He'll fetch to 18. Uh, he has... As far as I can tell, multiple copies of Mana Morphos. So if he has a Faithless Looting, he might be able to bring back an Arclight Phoenix this turn. Let's see how this turn goes, because I think it's going to be a pretty good one for Dan J. Finds Basic Mountain with sunglasses on it. How does a mountain have sunglasses? I can understand the, the you know, the Serum Visions person or whatever. Pyromancer Ascension. And he dodged the Ley Lines. So that one might be good. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, Oliver's draw here has not been super good. You know, it hasn't really hit any Dark Amoebas or Prize Amalgams or Blood Gas, but uh, he can flashback looting here. But he only has one Dredger in the yard with that one life from the Loma, as far as I can tell. So he's going to need to have a nice hit here. Okay, so he flashes back looting, dredges life from the Loma, has to draw one card because he missed, but he found a Creeping Chill and a Prize Amalgam. Discard Stinkweed Imp and life from the Loma. Creeping Chili, it's Dan to 15, to Michael to 22. And now we'll see just how quickly Jessup can get the Ascension online in this game. I know he has man multiple Manamorphos, but as you saw last game, it's it's rather important to have those after you turn on the Pyromancer Ascension. But Dan Jays might not have a choice. He might just need to, to go for it uh, now. So he does start on Manamorphos, has a blue and a red mana floating. All right, two copies of Serum Vision in hand. Another copy of Manamorphos, so he's going to cycle these basically to trigger the, uh, the Pyromancer Ascension. All right, one counter on that. Blue and red again. Finds Noxious Revival. It's not a bad one. Can maybe put Prize Amalgam on top of Oliver's deck in response to it coming back to the battlefield. Maybe do the same thing to a Narc Amoeba so it actually never enters play. With the land drop and another cantrip, well, never mind what I'm about to say because he just has third mana Morphos in hand. Ascension is now live. It is live, but without those mana Morphos, it's a, a bit worse. But it looks like he does have Noxious Revival in hand, so he can go Noxious Revival two times, paying two life, put two mana Morphos on top, cast Serum Vision, drop both of them, and then kind of go off from there. So here is Noxious Revival. That one's being copied just up to 13, puts those mana Morphos back on top of the deck. Still has not made his land drop. Going to cast Serum Visions, and that'll draw both Manamorphos as it is copied. Opt scribe to the bottom, second Manamorphos kept on top. Still red mana floating. Yeah, now he's going to get to cast multiple Mana Morphos here. Uh, generate a bunch of extra mana, cast a bunch of cantrips as well, thanks to that land drop in the Steam Vents. Shocks to 11. If he finds another Nox Revival, he might actually just win this turn. He's been scrying a bunch of stuff that kind of plays Lightning Bolt and Steering Visions to the bottom. Seems like he's very much just trying to combo this turn. Yeah, he doesn't want to let Oliver untap because things could go south for him. If he finds another Nox Revival, I do believe that is going to be game. Four mana floating now. Two of each color. F cast and copy, Faithless Looting. And he does have one Phoenix to pitch, and he found another Nox for Survival. I think that's going to be it. Yep, show the Nox Survival. I would like to demonstrate a loop, and Dan Jessup wow. defeats Oliver Tomiko. He is up to 12-3. and three. Very much live for top eight.